some wicked thing. But here's the thing I'm trying to point out. They make light of doctrine. They think it's a little thing. And I was listening to and critiquing some Reformed Baptist people uh, this week, and I was, I was taking some notes on it, and they were talking about ecumenicism. Now, I don't know if you know what ecumenicism is, but basically they were talking about how they are cl very closely aligned and have great fellowship, these Reformed Baptists, with, with Presbyterians and with other Reformed and Protestant churches. Right. Yeah, you, yeah, you, you, you don't. Yeah. You, you don't see it there. And so um, as a result of, of taking this approach, it allows us to claim a closer heritage right, right. to the Puritans. Right. And, and finally, it provides ecumenicity in all the right places with our pedo baptistic brothers. Mm -hmm. when, when, you, when, you, uh, when you take this sort of what's the least, the least amount of change possible to get to credo baptism, you're affirming the core fundamental principles of the covenant of grace. You're, right. you're, you're simply departing in the mode of administration or the, just really the time, the time and mode of administration of baptism to the covenant people, right? Right, right. Um, that, that's the only difference, right? Uh, at, the, at the end of the day, we could, um, we could you know, uh, be wrong and our kids will be, not be sent to hell because they weren't baptized as infants, right? right like, right. you know, God, that's not the way that works. And so right. um, one, one last consideration, and I, I think the simple solution is just to take a step back to the covenant theology of the confessional time period. And right. I think that you're, uh, you, you'll find a greater amount of ecumenicity, of ability to fellowship in the best possible way, good ecumenicity, not... Um, you know, going to Joel Osteen's church and buddy buddying with him, but like good ecumenicity, uh, and and uh, I have found great fellowship with Presbyterians and found it quite easy to do so right. with our view of covenant. So, right. um, that's been it. I'm Associate Pastor Taylor DeSoto, Lead Pastor Dane Johansson. Thank you. It just seems like um, you know, we, we just don't have the pleasure or the displeasure of having a lot of Reformed right. Baptists. Most of our friends are actually Presbyterian. Right. Yeah. Yeah, in Dutch Reform, the most people we have interaction with, right, whether yeah. it be online or not, is that our, our, our main Reformed Baptist brethren seem to be, that we talk to, seem to be um, scattered abroad. And, and we would like to change that. So, hey, if you're in the Valley and you're watching and you'd like to have more. Uh, among the Reformed Baptist camp is, mm -hmm. you know, first of all, what do we believe about the covenant? And uh, especially from our pedo baptistic brothers and sisters, there's often a lot of, you know, sort of memes, if you will, about how Reformed Baptists aren't Reformed, and th there's a reason for that. I think they have they have a, a reason for saying that. And then additionally, you have kind of a, a split camp amongst Reformed Baptists themselves. Right. And so before we begin this podcast, we want to safely couch the topic in the fact that we have many brothers who we dearly love on both the Westminster Federalist side, the Dutch Reformed side, the, the 1689 Federalist side, and then, you know, on uh, we even have New Covenant Theology friends, you know, yeah. and, and various articulations of that. And so we want to make sure that our, our spirit is uh, that of uh, uh, ireticism and mm. unity here. And and so this is not a polemic podcast. This is not, we're not trying to start a... ...are influenced in different ways, but there's no reason to toss somebody out just because they're critical text yeah. uh, or, or the other way around, depending on where you land. But, I mean... You, you pick, like, that. this is always good advice. Uh, chew the meat, spout the bones. Um, you can do that with pretty much any writer. You just nod. Yeah, that the was a camera nod. Okay. Okay. If we're going to actually get anywhere. Stop calling people that like the KJV KJV onlyists, and only if they're actually KJV onlyists, then use that insult. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and, and same from the TR guys. Stop calling James White a devil. Um, that's not helpful. That's not. That's actually slanderous and and, and not a, honorable. And, and he's an apologist. And he was an elder in a church for years and years. Yes, he, he's still an elder. I mean, he was ordained. Yeah, he's an ordained. He's an ordained minister. minister. So yeah, if, you, if you, I don't know if he's serving as an elder. At, not not serving yeah. as an elder, but still. But either way, you don't slander. Don't don't brother, slander don't slander, slander a, a father in the faith. Yeah. Um, not without reason. And and uh, and and uh, or just don't slander him. Uh, if you have an accusation, do it properly. Yeah. Uh, or and, we agree with 99% of what he says, and then, if we, and then we differ here, though we think it's an important mm -hmm. and foundational issue, right. and so does he, doesn't mean we're, you know, all of a sudden now he's Satan. Um, right. I don't, I don't see that. Right. And you see a lot of the stuff going on in, in the yeah, TR circles, like to the point where James White can't even join these groups. 
um, because of the mud that gets thrown at him. Yeah. Uh, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. So, so both sides need to stop doing it. Yeah. And that's really kind of the, if you want to have a productive conversation, that's how it has to happen. Yeah. And I think if, because uh, I know debates have been proposed and there's been talks and the displeasure of having a lot of Reformed right. Baptists. Most of our friends are actually Presbyterian. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And Dutch Reform, the most people we have interaction with, right, whether yeah. it be online or not, is that our. our, our they make light of doctrine. They think it's a little thing. And I was listening to and critiquing some Reformed Baptist people uh, this week. And I was, I was taking some notes on it. And they were talking about ecumenicism. Now, I don't know if you know what ecumenicism is. But basically, they were talking about how they are cl very closely aligned and have great fellowship, these Reformed Baptists, with, with Presbyterians and with other Reformed and Protestant churches. Now, I looked up the word ecumenicism, and I don't like to use all these big fancy words, but I'll just use this. This is a popular word, and it's something I've, I've heard preached against my entire life. We are against ecumenicism. Against it. Kids, ecumenicism, bad. Let's try it. Ecumenicism, thank you. All right. Ecumenicism, this is on... This is on um, this is an article on the Encyclopedia Britannica, written by the editors. Ecumenicism is a movement or a tendency towards worldwide Christian unity or cooperation. The term is of recent origin and emphasizes what is viewed as the universality of the Christian faith and the unity among the churches. The ecumenical movement seeks to recover the apostolic sense of the early church for unity in diversity. And it confronts the frustrations, difficulties, and ironies of the modern pluralistic world. It is a lively reassessment of the historical sources and destiny of what followers perceive to be the one holy Catholic and apostolic church of Jesus Christ. So here, here's what basically this is. This is the end times antichrist one world religion that's being formed. That's what the Catholic Church is doing. That's when the Catholic Church is reaching across the aisle and holding hands with the Jews, holding hands with the Muslims, and holding hands with the Calvin, uh, excuse me, the, the Calvinists, yeah, them too. But the Protestants, a lot of them, half of them are Calvinists, and, and all of these people are holding hands. That's ecumenicism. They are all trying to just put their doctrine aside so that they can all just have unity just like the early church had unity. Well, let me tell you something. The early church, you know what they did? They cast out the false brethren. And you know where they went? They went and started the holy, unholy Catholic church. And you're going to tell me we're supposed to yoke up with them? Nope. Mark them and kick them out. That's what the Bible says. Ecumenicism is the end times yoking up of all false Christianity against the Lord Jesus and the doctrines of Christ. It's the home of all those who depart from the faith because they were not of us. It is the home of all those who departed from the faith. And, you know, what, they, what did they depart from? And who did they depart from? They departed from the faith, the doctrines that are laid out in my King James Bible. And they departed from, and where did they depart to? They departed to the doctrines of devils, doctrines of devils found in ecumenical churches today. Catholics, Orthodox, Protestants, all false churches with false doctrine, false gospels filled with false brethren. And you better not let them in. If they come in unaware, what do you do? The moment you figure them out, you kick them out. But if they come in unaware, that's just the way it is. But you know what? That's why when we, a, a Protestant comes in here, we're not going to accept them. And you know what? I'm going to tell you something right now. I'm not fellowshipping with ecumenical people. Hey, listen, there's some Baptists wanting to hold hands with the Protestants. And I'm telling you right now, I don't want to fellowship with people who are ecumenical. Right. Yeah, you, you, yeah, you, you don't. Yeah. You, you don't see it there. And so or in um, as a result of, of taking this approach... It allows us to claim a closer heritage right, right. to the Puritans. Right. And, and finally, it provides ecumenicity in all the right places with our pedo baptistic brothers. Mm -hmm. when, when, you, when, you, uh, when you take this sort of what's the least 
the least amount of change possible to get to credo baptism, you're affirming the core fundamental principles of the covenant of grace. You're, right. you're, you're simply departing in the mode of administration or the, just really the time, the time and mode of administration of baptism to the covenant people, right? Right, right. Uh, especially from our pedo baptistic brothers and sisters, there's often a lot of, you know, sort of memes, if you will, about how Reformed Baptists aren't Reformed, and th there's a reason for that. I think they have they have a, a reason for saying that. And then additionally, you have kind of a, a split camp amongst Reformed Baptists themselves. Mm -hmm. And I, I think the simple solution is just to take a step back to the covenant theology of the confessional time period. And right. I think that you're, uh, you, you'll find a greater amount of ecumenicity of ability to fellowship in the best possible way, good ecumenicity, not, um, you know, good ecumenicity. Uh, and and uh, I have found great fellowship with Presbyterians and found it quite easy to do so right. with our view of covenant. So right. um, that's been it. I'm I don't want to fellowship with it. Why would I want to fellowship with doctrines of devils? Second Corinthians chapter 6. Uh, says this, if you want to flip over there, 2 Corinthians chapter 6. The Bible says, Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? What communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath uh, he that believeth with an infidel? You say, well, Brother Johnson, Pastor Johnson, we're talking about our Presbyterian brothers here. We're not talking about unbelievers. They're believers. Hey, let me tell you something about your Presbyterian brothers, all right? You know what they are? They're false brethren. You know, they're false brethren. You say, but, but, but Pastor Johnson, come on. This is talking about people that are worshiping the devil. These are talking about people who are worshiping the devil. That's what this is talking about. We're not supposed to yoke up with Satanists. Hey, you know what the Bible actually says? Look, hold your place there. Hold it. Look back at 1 Timothy chapter number 4. And look what it says. Here's what it is. They are leaving, departing from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. You know what, you know what the doctrines, where the false doctrines come from, right? You know where all the, the, the doctrines that are against the Bible and against the faith that was once delivered to us was? Hey, listen, it's, they come straight from the devil. They come straight from the demons. That's what the Bible teaches. Bible, let me give you some other verses. The Bible says, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Ephesians 5.11, 2 Thessalonians 3.6, Now we can command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw yourself from every brother that walketh disorderly, and listen, and not after the tradition which he received of us. You know what the Bible says? You withdraw yourself from brothers who aren't following this book right here. You withdraw yourself. It doesn't say go and, and, and fellowship with them at the ecumenical uh, you know, gathering at the White House. The one time a year that the stinking uh, politicians, that the president and all those stinking co congressmen and senators, they pray one time a year when they want to get all the Baptists and the, and the Protestants and the Catholics and the Seventh-day Adventists and the Mormons and all the false religions of the world into one room so that they can... Uh, solidify the, the ecumenical uh, stinking evangelical blo voting block. The one time of the year they pray at that national prayer breakfast, you know, because they, they got to get us all together in some big hand-holding kumbaya. Nope. Not going to happen. You know what? I'm not going to have anything fellowship with their unfruitful works of darkness. The Bible says withdraw yourself. It doesn't say jo yoke up with them. It doesn't say come into fellowship with them. It doesn't say have a, 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 an ecumenical citywide crusade with them. Franklin Graham, Billy Graham. It doesn't say anything about that. Uh, Romans 16, 17 says, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and defenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. Somebody said, well, doctrine, if we, t if we focus too much on doctrine, you're, you're missing the finer points of the Christian life, like love and unity and faith and all these types of things. And they'll say, and, and doctrine divides us. You know, why are we, why are we, this, why are we fighting against, uh, between Calvinism and Arminianism? Why are we fighting between all these different doctrines, all these ideas? Like, what, 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 we, let's just, can't we all just get along? 
Wah, wah. Well, the Bible says, listen, they're the ones dividing. They're the ones, look, it's their fault. They want to make us think, they're, they're like, you guys are just so divisive. You fundamentalists, you just can't get along with anybody. What's wrong with you? You know what the Bible told me to do? Mark the ones that caused the division contrary to the Bible. They're dividing. They're the ones that are dividing. They're the ones that separated from us. They went out from us because they were not of us. They're the ones that, that departed. So when we take a stand and say, here, we're not moving on the faith, that's, that's, that's them dividing from us. That's what the Bible says. Mark them that cause divisions and offenses. They come in to try to get people to go their way. And the Bible says avoid them. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to avoid Catholics unless I'm giving them the gospel on their turf. And we're not on equal footing, Roman Catholic. We're not on equal footing with all these false religions and false denominations. We're not, look, we're not on equal footing with the Presbyterians and the Reformed Baptists. We're not, we're not, we're not on that, we're, we're causing, we're going to mark them that are contrary to the doctrines which you have learned and avoid them. 2 John 1, 9 says, Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. Luke 12, 51 says, Suppose, here's my Christmas sermon. You know, peace on earth, goodwill to men. Well, that's a great message. Here's, here's another one for you. You see the, the Christmas card in the mail that says peace on earth? Jesus said this in Luke 12, 51. Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth, I tell you nay, but rather division. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's not, I, I don't know about that verse. What is that verse about? Hey, you know what? The Bible, Jesus said that, you know what? If we're going to walk godly in Christ Jesus, the Bible tells us we're going to suffer persecution. And the Bible tells us to separate from the wicked uh, the wicked doctrines and so on. John 8, 31 says, Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Look, the truth is what we're supposed to follow. We're supposed to follow Jesus Christ. The Bible says in James 4, 4, Ye adulterers and adulteress, know ye not that friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. 1 Timothy 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devil. I want to just point this out. You know, this mantra of the ecumenical movement is a relationship over doctrine. Minimize doctrine. But is doctrine important? I'm telling you it is. It is important. Proverbs 4, 2 says, For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. Anybody who says, you know, don't, don't, don't focus on doctrine, don't separate on doctrine, don't make a big stink about doctrine, is wrong. The Bible says, I give you good doctrine, forsake not my law. Mark 1, 22 said, And they were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority and not of the scribes. You know what Jesus preached? Doctrine. Doctrine. Doctrine, they minimize the importance of doctrine because they're led by seducing spirits. They're preaching doctrines of devils. They're appealing to our flesh. We often talk about, you know, I, I, and I look, I use this term all the time and I don't have a problem with it. But you know, we'll talk about false doctrine. Beware of false doctrine. Well, you know what? The Bible talks about the false brethren and the false Christ. The Bible talks about the false gospel. But you know what? I, I couldn't find false doctrine in the Bible. But you know what I could find in the Bible? Doctrines of devils. 